Well, this is your pre Halifax positive news. And then I'll explain why. Right before we do the interview with Ailish McNulty, have you noticed this? This is amazing. They're all getting ready for a big special event next week that will be featured on CTV. The uh, National Championship Canadian one. So tell us, Ailish, our new uh, sports uh, correspondent, how do you feel about uh, the upcoming uh, next week? And you're going to be on the camera within the few, next few minutes, is that correct? Yes, yes it is. Yes. I'm very excited. I'm very excited to have some really good exposure. And yes. uh, I'm excited to be part of Nationals. It only comes to Dartmouth every four years. Right. And when it does, we're all very excited. Uh, it's going to be, you know, 1,500 plus athletes coming here. We're going to have bleachers in our McMack parking lot so you can come and get a really great view of the finish line on over on the McMack side. We're going to have food trucks, we're going to have merchandise and everything. So, um, yeah, we're really excited to, to have this back here again and uh, it's always a really great competition to take part in, especially in your hometown. It's great to have a hometown advantage. Oh, wh wh where are you from? I'm from Dartmouth. From Dartmouth, yeah, okay. I've uh, lived here my whole life, so right. this is where I've been for the last 20 Ish years down at this okay. lake paddling, so right. this is it. Well, thank you very much. We'll um, we'll do the right. for, full interview. Do? I just decided that the coverage itself will be called the Ailish McNulty Sports coverage in your honor. Yeah. And whenever we're covering, we're, we're going to be saying, now the very first thing that we're going to do is called Try to Find Ailish. Did we find her? Yes, she's right there on the boat. Perfect. <laughs> Okay, so they're pushing, they're pushing themselves like that. I'm taping and working to better understand how this all works. Okay, yeah, so uh, there's 14 athletes. There's 14 there's athletes. seven on the left side okay. and seven on the right side. Okay. And then we have a cock swing. Okay. Just kind of uh, stands in the back, he or she stands in the back and steers the boat okay. and uh, is kind of the commander of the boat, if you will. Okay. So this is a practice, boys against girls? Mm -hmm. 
I believe there's going to be a little race up. Oh, a race. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. It sounds positive. Everybody's talking with, with a smile. Yeah. Working is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to get that many people in the boat all working towards the same goal. All trying to work together instead of just as one. What was that? We feel very popular today. Me? Our club. Woo! Some cheer up! Yeah! Yeah! This is great to see you all all pumped up like that. So do you think you'll be beating boys? Oh, easy. Oh, easy. Oh, oh, listen to the confidence here. Woo! So, how does it work whenever it's on, on your mark, get ready, get set, go, or...? Yes? Okay. Question. How do you feel about beating up the girls? How about what? Beating up the girls, no. <laughs> How about the competition? How are you feeling? Doing great. How about the practice, yeah? <laughs> Is there a lot of excitement in the air? Very, a lot of excitement. A lot of excitement. <laughs> so who's going to be doing the countdown? The very first time I'm seeing this. <laughs> How does the countdown work? That's the what? How does the countdown work? Uh, it's just ready, set, go. Ready, set, go? Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. We can either ball and tell them. And then you go. Yeah. Too, you don't go
I just, it's, it's amazing really to have the community kind of reach back in to help us because it's a very expensive sport and uh, we need all the help we can get and training all the time. It's hard to kind of balance, you know, school, family, relationships, jobs, training twice a day, sometimes three times a day. It takes a, it takes a lot of energy and stuff, so it's really awesome to have the kind of backbone that, that I have and that all, a lot of us do have. So you said uh, relationships, you said jobs, and Wow. There's, there's something that we talked about previously that I wanted to bring to viewers. Even on a regular basis for your job, you have to drive a car. She's got to drive um, <laughs> one of those kayaks, kayaks yeah. behind. Now, um, how, how much is worth about one of those kayaks? Um, these work news, we had to fundraise a lot for them. Okay. Uh, it's about $20,000. $20,000 for the car that she needs to drive. Well, not sometimes I'm, I am in that boat, um, right. but my own personal boat is actually in this boat bay. You'll get to see it in a few minutes when right. I get out on the water. It yes. kind of looks like an Easter egg. Um, and yeah, <laughs> those are, <laughs> it does. And those are, you know, upwards of $4,000. So okay. to get kind of provincial funding as well as corporate sponsorships and, and help for my family and trying to save up from, from a job that I have here actually. I work upstairs. You work uh, upstairs? I do, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I work. Where do you work at? Uh, just right up here. We do like functions and weddings and parties and uh, actually the Melatones are playing tonight. <laughs> so I, oh. I work the bar upstairs. So uh, oh, kind of. She's a bar maid. Okay. <laughs> much multi-talented. <laughs> well. Yeah, so when I'm not training, I, yes. uh, I'm, I'm trying to work just okay. to, to save up some money. So. Very, very good. Now, uh, as I'm talking about kayak, I, I wonder, are they all automatic or you have a transmission attached to it? <laughs> They're all manual. All manual? <laughs> yeah. That's <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what we uh, that's what we train for, and we do a lot of cross training in the off season. Because for paddlers, there is there's we train all year round, but uh, there's no really like off season because we're always training all year right. round. Um, we'll do you know like cross country skiing. Right. We'll do weights uh, in the gym, uh, swimming, running, kind of you name it, and we'll do it. Okay. <laughs> that's Kayak because this this is quite our world. She, she didn't explain to me earlier as well that this sport is uh, costing quite a lot. I think we have a couple of answers. Um, so, just to, to, to continue, um, it's great to hear a little bit more about the, uh, the games that you do in the and those different countries. How did that go? Um, they went really well. Uh, I competed in. Uh, uh, it was Olympic Hopes Regatta in Zagan, in the 2012. Right. And in 2012 and 2013, I went to uh, Junior World Championships in Ontario. Uh, I raced uh, K2 and, and K4 there. And that was an amazing experience. That was kind of my first like big world championships. And it okay. was it was amazing. And that year was a, that was, year was a busy one. And we went to um, uh, Canada Games that year, which was in Sherbrooke. Um, so the paddlers did very, very well. We, I think we we all walked away with at least one medal from there. Oh, wow. Most of us with like almost like four or more, which was amazing. Wow. Yeah, it was it was really great. A lot of fun. Um, and also in that same year, I went to Puerto Rico to do the Pan Am Championships, which is different than the Pan Am Games. Okay. What's um, what's what's, uh, what's the difference between both? Um, Pan Am Championships is just uh, just the paddling. And uh, Pan Am Games, it, like if I am correct, uh, Pan Am Games is the multi-sport. Uh, so that was in Toronto, and our paddlers did really, really well there. I wasn't, okay. I wasn't on that team, but right. they did awesome. Okay. Um, and then in 2014, I went to, I got to go to Gazegat again, and it was beautiful to kind of know where I was. Uh, we were kind of walking around these beautiful cobblestone streets. I was like, oh, 
I know I know a place down here, like follow me. And was, so it was, it was really cool to know where I was. And we went there for uh, UT3 uh -oh. World Championships. And uh, and I raced, uh, I got to race K1 there. Uh, so K1 is uh, one person in a kayak. So okay. I'll, I'll be showing you guys in the triple Easter egg. Yes. Um, so one person and we have K2, which is two people in a kayak. And then we have K4, which is four people in a kayak. Right. And uh, we have the same thing with, with canoes too, okay. which is up on one knee is right. the difference. Um, yeah. And so we have C1, C2, and C4 as well. Um, and yeah, so I got to race the one 200 at that world, and I got to race K4 as well. So we, yeah, that was that was some great trips that I went on and training camps. We go to Florida every year for almost three months. Oh yeah, that's really true. So tell us more about that camp. Sure. So we go. Um, we go to a place called Indian Harbor Beach in Florida, and we train there for yeah about three months away from home because we try to run away from the ice and uh, we like to get back in the water as soon as we can. So we train there and it's a very intense, very difficult training camp. Um, and so I'll go down like uh, the past few years I've gone down with my club and then went on to do the national program um, just to get in some work with my with my teammates and with my personal coach for Chase Long. So I, uh, I just get some groundwork done and then I move on to the national team program, which is always really fun to see all my friends again. And uh, yeah, it's very it's very tough work. We'll do a lot of rubber boats, so switching around combinations and K2s and K4s. Oh, uh, and you kind of look at adaptability and you see kind of who's fast in, in the cruise. And uh, yeah, it's very, it's, sometimes it's, you're very homesick, you're very tired, you want to go home. Um, but it is uh, it's an awesome experience to be able to even do that. And, uh, and a lot of us have to balance school while we're down there too, so it's not all training. We have to break it up with a lot of homework too. Okay. <laughs> so how how do you uh, manage that when, when you have to do your, your practice at camp and at the same time you're studying? Um, time management. Time management, time management is kind of a skill that we've all been learning since we all started, you know, doing this competitively um, and we'll never master it, ever. Um, but I'm in, going into my fourth year at Dalhousie in psychology, so I've definitely, I'm a lot better at it now than I have okay. been in the past go. years. Um, yeah, it's just about... There you go! <laughs> yeah. He's getting there! Um, so I've, I'm a lot better now, and a lot of us, you kind of, like sometimes uh, with training, like all year round, especially during, in the fall, uh, like I have five courses this fall, so to be able to train twice a day and still have, you know, two or three classes every day, sometimes things are sacrificed every week, so sometimes you don't get to spend time with your family that week, sometimes your sleep is a, is a subpar, you know, sometimes your, your studies get a little pushed aside and sometimes your training um, is slacking a little bit. Um, or sometimes, you know, you just rough. <laughs> so sometimes your mental health isn't, isn't on, on point with everything, but it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely just kind of learning how to take it a day or a week at a time to, uh, to kind of time manage everything that you need to do. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's tough, but it's definitely worth it. Chris, uh, you are such a source of, of inspiration. It's nice to uh, to hear from you. And I, I was saying to her that you are definitely following you on CT Sports. Not only that, but you know what? We're also going to organize a fundraiser. And you make sure that if, if, if I can ask you the following question, what would be your ultimate uh, upcoming goals for the last couple of years? The next couple of years, um, well, the next couple of years I would like to get back on the uh, on the two three national team. Um, I would really like to get back on that, um, and then kind of in the upcoming years, like get back on the senior national development team, which I was a, a part of last year, so I'm racing for that. Uh, this coming week, um, and yeah, I guess the ultimate goal, like all of us, is the 2020 Olympics. 2020 Olympics. That is the goal we're going to do. We're going to ensure we bring you there. Sounds good, people. The 2020 Olympics CTV will be broadcasting, and she will be on TV.
Sounds good. <laughs> there you go. All right. So, this is not over. It's just a glimpse of the future. Now, because we're going to see very soon what it looks like when Ibra is practicing. Now, I even made a commitment. I said to her, whenever you go paddling, we're going to organize also an event where I will be paddling with her. I'll be under the supervision of Chris. <laughs> make sure I don't sing. <laughs> and, or I don't do anything wrong. My master's going to be in. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to follow what she's saying. Yes, yes you will. There we go. Just follow and I'll, uh, I'll take you down the, uh, down the lake. There you go. And then she said to me, as long as you do that, everything is going to be okay. We might have to put a like, jacket on you, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, um, anything else that you wish to add to your beautiful experience? Not really. Just, uh, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to Nationals being back here. Just, I cannot wait. We've had a countdown on for the last, like, I don't know, 60 days that, that 60 I know days? of. Yeah, we have a countdown on the ABCDC website that counts down the yes. days, hours, minutes, seconds to, uh, to national. We're all really, really looking forward to it. Well, that sounds great. And you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm even going to, to, to say to everyone, every time we're going to be covering, the question of the week is going to be, where is Eilish? Find Eilish. Because she's our at least superstar. Yeah. You have to find Eilish. The moment you do, Right on Facebook, and you never know what you will win as a prize. But you have to find her. Just look for the, the purple Easter egg. The purple Easter egg. That's what you gotta look for. You know what? I, I like the fact that your, your purple Easter egg is like a holiday. Because during that holiday, what do you get Easter? A lot of chocolate on Easter. Yeah, well, uh, there you go. Chocolate is always good. She says flavorful and lots of chocolate. <laughs> So everyone, this is going to be the take two. We want to call it like this. The uh, the reason why I wanted to pursue this, this interview is because whenever everything starts, there's always companies, organizations, and people that are there behind to kickstart us to help her out. Yeah, yeah, and that was she, she wanted to, the, the moment she mentioned it to me, I said, you know what, let's take a few minutes more to express. So, who was your dream believer? My dream believer was probably my parents, my, my family. They've always been behind me in the sport, and they've never pressured me to do any sort of thing with performance or to, to focus on school instead. Um, they've always been really open to, you know, pushing me to where they think that I can be. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's, it's always been really great having them behind me. I mean, financially, of course, and, and emotional support. Like, I wouldn't be where I am today without, without them. Um, so I consider that a huge success. Um, but I've also had a lot of help from the community. Um, so I've had five sponsors that I'm going to be showcasing at this Nationals. I have stickers on my boat. Okay. Um, They've been a huge help to me because, you know, as I said before, like this sport is pretty expensive, pretty costly, um, and so it's always awesome to have have some extra support with with training costs and uh, and everything like that. So I have um, I have Selfie Wine, which is my newest sponsor. Selfie Wine. So they're my they're my only sponsor. It's a little too Selfie Wine. <laughs> yes. Um, and we have some samples during the. Uh, the TV appearances no next week. I could probably make that happen. Great, <laughs> it's that very would be good. Great. Yes, we'll get to know them and yeah. we'll have a little, you know, yeah, so we'll have a little class and we'll say we cannot have a sip without her coming here. <laughs> yeah. Have her sip. Is that, did, did Chris allow? Yes, he said yes. <laughs> okay. But uh, so we have that from Yost Vineyards. So they're my only silver sponsor right now. Okay. And uh, and I have four other uh, bronze, we call it kind of like bronze, silver, right. gold sponsorships. So I have uh, four bronze sponsorships. Um, I have Celtic Corner. Celtic Corner, yes. Um, Public House, which is uh, probably the biggest Dartmouth sponsor. Um, okay. And uh, so that's just down in the Right, yes. It's great food. And, um, and I have Bloom, not for profit, and Lawson. So she's been a really great help. Okay. Really pretty sticker. <laughs> and um, <laughs> then I have Nova Tall and Marble. Okay. And uh, we have. Uh, yeah. 
another fan. Yeah, another this one. You, you have numerous fans. Give me a second. Would you like to say a few words about uh, English? No. No? Okay. Oh, she, she, she's blushing. Well, I'm sure that she hates, she uh, she appreciates your, your support. Yes. So, no, yes, continue. Okay. And I have, uh, I have one more, and it's Encore Developments Limited. And, uh, yeah, so I, I made up a, a sponsorship proposal, and I kind of went around to a lot of businesses around Halifax and Dartmouth, and uh, I was lucky enough to get these five sponsors to, uh, and they really are really helping me offset the costs. And I've okay. put a lot of it into a savings fund for Florida. Sponsors to meet with us next week. And I'm going to say, in Florida, Georgia, Boneva, we will be more than delighted to work with you because the next one coming time that she goes to Florida, you'll have the chance to, to, to get to talk with her. Because we have seen you in Florida, and I'm sure that she'll be uh, more than, than delighted to, to follow you. Starting from today, you can even catch this on you. And you know what? I'm going to say to all the companies that are watching us, very soon, we're going to have her as an icon. Frisbee was the first one. McNulty's the second one. But the first one in Canary and Payette. Good. So, now, are we all ready? Oh, we feel the excitement in the air. Are we ready to see her canoe and canoe? As I said, when I do it, I will be under the supervision of Chris. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was the one kind of when I was in the scout like 30 years ago. Oh, yeah. So I think I, I might be a tiny bit rusty, but I should it's be. It's okay. Open. Muscle memory. It works out. <laughs> Muscle memory. <laughs> it works out just fine. All right. So stay tuned. In a few minutes, you'll see this. Thank you. That was really good. So this is the best part you're going to look for. This is the Easter present that she got. This is the Easter egg. Wow, look at this systematic behind her. The concentration. She's lifting this with one hand. NTM Encore Celtic Corner. And Bliss. Yes. I'm third. What, what am I? I'm third on the right. What am I? <laughs> oh. So these boats are a little bit more tippy than uh, than the one that you're probably going to come in with me. Um, okay. These ones are the, the sprint packs, so uh, they're about 12 kilograms with with the weight put in because we have like weight restrictions, mm -hmm. so all the boats have to be weighed at the end of competition uh, to make sure that it's all fair. Uh, so there's different weights for different, uh, different boats, like a C1 is 14 kilograms or 16 kilograms, a K1 is uh, supposed to be 12. And uh, so it's very light, it's very skinny, it's very fast. So how is it made, uh, what, what kind of material is it made of? It's carbon fiber. Carbon fiber? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, they, uh, they have it down to a science now. So it's okay. is, the, is the maker of it. So. And are you finding that it's, uh, it's efficient for you as, a, as an athlete? Yeah, yes, definitely. definitely. Okay. Yeah.
Sure, sure. I'll kind of go up that way and I'll get the Sounds great. Really good. I'm following you now. Back down. Oh, yes. yes. Thank you, girls. Just so everyone knows, we're looking for redness of skin mostly. And pain. Yeah. <laughs> 
in like a retap, we think Jack has more than that. We blame that on Will. Will, please do better. Watching CTV Sports. Covering the National Canoe and Kayaking Championship at Nationwide next week. again for all of you to have been on camera and definitely stay tuned for good morning everyone live in the action a few days before the national championship they, they know way better how to pronounce it than I do I have the privilege today to be with the head. The one who's making sure, the one who's making sure that uh, the championship going will be going the right way for the There you go. How are you doing? Chris Chasson here, head coach. So tell us about yourself and the history of what brought you all the way here. Uh, so I've been the head coach for the last seven years. We are one of the biggest Oh, is that it for our second match? Good morning, everyone. Five finalists coming up. We're just one for us. So far, the athletes have been having a good season. Should continue. And when it comes to the athletes, how many athletes are we talking about? Uh, our club as a whole has about 350 athletes. 350 We meet at the national championships, which is 16 and up. Next weekend we have 60. Okay. And what are the what, what's the range of, of age? Uh, with us, it goes from 14 uh, to we have some uh, masters. Okay. So up to about 50, 50. 
Okay. Wow. So, for, um, as, as a team, a team every year, daily, what are the different uh, practices, the different sizes or sizes that we have to do? How many times a day? Our sports are very different. Okay. I like the look We are training usually three times a day. Three times a day. Three times a day, and that is usually twice on the water. Okay. On a daily basis, on a weekly basis, actually, we're doing about two hours of work. Twelve morning hours, twenty-five hours. Well, it's like a full-time job. Yeah, that's that's what I'm definitely noticing. So, in in uh, a day of practice, to be ready for the championship next week, uh, you start that uh, at one in the afternoon, or you start that at like eight in the morning. We were up this morning at seven. At seven, the okay. first workout this morning. Uh, right now, it's all about fine tuning. Fine tuning. Practices aren't that long, but okay. it's very specific. Right. Okay. So when when you say uh, fine tuning, is it uh, is it uh, how, how does it uh, happen with, with the team? Because when I was thinking, something that I that I saw was there was a lot of synchronization. Yeah. Like the moment the the commander, like in the front, would say let's go, everybody was paddling pretty much all at the same time. I was, that was quite surprising. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and that's what it's all about. It's all about team working that boat. Um, if you have 14 people all doing different things, mm -hmm. it's not going to go well. Um, so that's part of that fine tuning. Uh, just to make sure everyone's on the same page, getting them moving together, moving the same way, uh, and just going over race plans. Just get out of here! Race plans. Okay. So does uh, does each athlete has like a game plan? Do they all have to like, meet like certain targets or certain expectations? Every athlete has their own personal goals. Okay. Uh, and depending on the athlete, some have their own individual race plans. Uh, okay. It's not something that we do with the young kids. Mm -hmm. But more advanced athletes, they have their own plans. So, when, the, uh, when they will be competing next week, uh, as far as the competition, is there like different uh, different range or age classes? Age classes? Okay. Yep. Yeah, there's uh, under 16, under 19. Uh, under Okay. So the the moment it starts, is it going to be one day for one each group or? No, it's all everybody's so together. Everybody's together. Everybody's together. Yeah. Five days long. It starts at eight in the morning and ends at six at night. Okay. So all the provinces across Canada will be here, right? Yeah, there's about 1,400 athletes coming okay. next week. Uh, that's 40 different new clubs. It's very interesting. We definitely look forward to, to see that. If I may ask you at the same time as a, as a head coach, what do you find that, the, that are good things, good moments, and the more challenging moments? The good moments, I would say, are when as a club, uh, athletes, everybody has a success. Okay, that's a mix of my enjoyable and fun. Uh, the hard part's all leading up to the racing, and that's all the training and, uh, and the organization that's going. Well, racing's the fun part. Everybody else is the fun part. <laughs> racing is the fun part. Yeah. And before yeah. you uh, you became head coach, how, how I mean, many years did you, did you practice yourself? Uh, what, what made you go into uh, Ooh, I see. Uh, I started because of my family, my parents paddled. Okay. Uh, so I was brought up at the Green Club. Oh, oh okay. So this one? Or, you know, was across the lake. Okay, uh, across the club. Because <laughs> But uh, we started there when... Before I was born, almost. Oh, really? <laughs> so uh, I grew up there, and, and it just almost a natural progression. Hey, that's uh, I went into that's coaching as a 16-year-old when I started. Oh wow! And, uh, 16 years old. Yeah, just as a part-time coach. And, okay. Uh, did a few years of that. And, uh, by the time I was 19, I was the head coach of a canoe club. I'm looking for good and I've been doing that for the last uh, 10 years. That is really good to know.
Uh, some, something I also saw was uh, your, your instant leadership and you know, all the viewers were coming back. All right, everybody, you're putting it exactly as you know it came. Make sure it's all ranged. You don't want to be yelled at. <laughs> so I was listening to you, I'm like, you know, it's like structure, structure, structure. We, we do it every day, and we deal with kids. And at the best of times, these kids can be a little messy. Uh, so, so part of my job is a little bit of a drill sergeant, making sure that things are done the right way, the proper way, in a safe way. And uh, as long as those get done, then we can have fun. And what are your expectations for national next week? For, for this expecting week? us to win a lot of medals. That's all I'm expecting. When it comes down to it, yeah. uh, <laughs> these guys have to go and, and execute their game plan and their races. And uh, we have a very talented group of athletes. Okay. As long as they go and race the best race, we'll be very successful. Okay. So if I may ask, when you were saying about game plans, will, are you meeting on the regular like having a, like a team meeting with the same regular We have team meetings every now and then. Okay. Uh, we usually go once a month, depending on what's coming up, maybe more frequently than that. Right. But the athletes have individual meetings. Okay. Whenever they are. Okay. Whenever they want to go, whenever they want to go. But all that stuff goes on a very regular basis. Okay. Well, I would like to thank you very much for your time. It was nice to, uh, to, to, to hear your words and, and so on. And we can look for, for, uh, for more. And certainly advise us when you have uh, competitions, whenever you're doing any events, we'll be delighted to come. Yeah. Look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you very much, thank Mr. Chesson.